festival of Shavuot is also called Zman Matan Torah Tenu, the festival of the giving of the Torah. We thank God for the gift of Torah, but as Jews, we always take time to remember those who gifted us with Torah, those who came before us, our parents and grandparents, teachers and friends. We always take time out to say thank you and to remember that Lador Vador from generation to generation. We thank God for the gift of Torah, for the gift of love, and for the gift of memory. We rise for the call to worship. Cause us, our Creator, to lie down in peace and raise us up, O Sovereign God, to renewed life and peace. This Hashkivenu prayer invites God to take from us our souls each evening and return them to us in the morning refreshed and renewed for a new day. As we consider our souls, we also think of the souls of those who are no longer with us. Those spirits abide in our hearts, their memories remain with us. We pray that God will sustain our souls now, that each of us can move back into our future with a sense of hope and a prayer for a coming day filled with blessing. We continue with Hashkimenu. Oh, oh, oh. 
On every one of our festivals, we read a different Megillah. On Sukkot, we read from Kohelet, Ecclesiastes. On Purim, we read from Esther. At our Seders, we read from Song of Songs. And now, on Shavuot, we read from the Book of Ruth. It is four short chapters of an incredible story of the devotion of one human being to another. We read it at this time because as we are celebrating Zman Matan Torah Tenu, the time of the giving of the Torah, we hear Ruth plead to her mother-in-law Naomi not to make her go back home to where she is from. She says to her mother-in-law, wherever you will go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your God will be my God. And where you die, there I will be buried. It is not only a statement of total devotion, but we consider Ruth to be the first convert as she takes it upon herself to accept the God that Naomi prays to and to join her fate with that of the Jewish people. Ruth is a beautiful book, both in its description of human relationships and its description of the harvest. But really, the book of Ruth is about death. Without the deaths of some of the characters, the entire story would not have unfolded. Naomi's husband dies. Her daughters-in-law, married to each of her sons, lose their husbands without children. That is why Naomi tells her daughters-in-law to turn back, to go and get married and to start a life. Orpah goes home, but Ruth stays with Naomi, and they return to Naomi's birthplace and her family. As the story goes, there is a redeemer, there is a close relative that will marry Ruth and continue the family line. That is how things worked in the ancient world. If your husband died leaving you without children, someone from your own family would marry you, have children, and continue that person's life through those children. Now, there is a redeemer, but he chooses not to redeem. And so the next closest relative, Boaz, the man whose field Ruth has been gathering wheat, decides to redeem Ruth. And because of all of these turns of events, because of all of these acts of kindness, the acts of kindness first that Ruth shows to Naomi and then Boaz shows to Ruth, they are rewarded by becoming the lineage of King David. Now, I think that we would all agree that most of us are happy that we are no longer forced to marry relatives if we are put in this situation. But think about it. We do want to continue our family lines. That's why we name our children after people who have passed away. We want them to have their characteristics. We see our loved ones in them, maybe in the crinkle around their eyes when they smile or in their laugh, or maybe even in their mannerisms. We pray that they have the compassion that a great grandparent had, the adventuresome spirit of an aunt or a cousin, the loving warmth of a mother or father. This is how we continue our family lines. We hope that the goodness and the soul of the person that we are naming after lives on in our children. We also thank our loved ones by what they taught us. We say, thank you for teaching me to put others before myself. Thank you for teaching me to appreciate the little things in life. Thank you for teaching me that human relationships are more important than any one thing could be. We see this between Ruth and Naomi. We see this between Ruth and Boaz. Judaism has taken these lessons and we have continued them from generation to generation. And so on this festival of Shavuot, on this Yiskor, we think about the people who we have loved. We think about how we see them in our lives now. We know they are in our hearts. And wherever we go, they go with us. 
And we are so very grateful for that. So now think of them in your mind's eye. Speak their names if you wish. Take a few minutes for silent East Core. Sick of heart. 
Wenn ho mar Amen. Years ago I shared with you one of my favorite stories. It was about how a man was holding his daughter and another person said to him, I see you've brought your mezuzah with you. I love that story. It'll always be one of my favorites. And I truly think of my own children that way as my mezuzot. But I also think of them as my Torah. I think of my parents, my sister, the people that I love are my Torah. My story is within them. And what I hope to pass on to my children is also in their Torah. And so on this Shavuot, when we celebrate God giving us the Torah, we also celebrate everyone in our lives who has been Torah for us. And so now we rise, if we are able, to say Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabah, be'al ma'adiv rach yirutei v'yamlich malchutei, b'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'v'chayei docho be'israel, ba'agala u'v'zman kari v'imru, amen. Yehei shmei rabah mevorach le'olam le'olmei omaya, Vid Barach, Vid Dabach, Vid Paar, Vid Roman, Vid Nase, Vid Hadar, Vid Ale, Vid Halal, Shemei de Kudisha, Brihu, Le Ela, Min Kol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechemata, De Amiran, Beoma, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shlama, Raba, Min Shemaya, Vichayim, Alenu, Veal, Kol Israel, Vimru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bimromav, Hu yaase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru, amen. We pray that the source of peace sends peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. Amen. Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom